For we have closely sent for him but hither, that he, destroyed by accident, may hear front Ophelia, your father and myself, lawful espouse, will so bestow ourselves that, seen, unseen, we may have their encounter frankly judge, and gather by him as he has behaved, whether it be the affliction of his love or no, but thus he suffers for. And for your part, Ophelia, I do wish that all your beauties be the happy cause of Hamlet's wildness. So shall I hope your virtues bring him to his wanted ways again, to both your honors. Good sir, I wish it may. Ophelia, walk you here. Gracious, so you please, we will bestow ourselves. I read on this book that show of such an exercise may color your loneliness. We're off to blame in this. Tis too much proved that devotional vesture and pious action with sugar over the devil himself. Oh, tis true. How smart a lash that speech doth give my conscience. The harlot's cheek, beauty with plastering art, is now more ugly to the thing that helps than is my deed to my most paint work. Oh, heavy bird. I hear him coming. Let's withdraw, my lord. <laughs> to be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it's no one of mine to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles for my opposing end now. To die, to sleep, no more. And by sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep. To sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of disprised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself, with a bare bodkin, his quietus make? Who would these fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but the dread Something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns puzzles the will and makes us rather bear the ills we have than the flight of those we know not of. Thus does conscience make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of revolution is sickly to the pale cast of thought, and enterprises of great pith and moment with disregard their currents turn away and lose the name of action. Fuck you now, fair Ophelia. Nymph, in thy orisons, be all my sins remembered. Good, my lord. How does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well, well, well. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have long and long to re-deliver. No, no, I, I never gave you aught. My honored lord, I know right well you did, and with them words of so sweet breath composed as made the things more rich. Their perfume lost, take these again, for to the noble mind, rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. There, my lord. Are you honest? Are you fair? What need to worship? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your duty. Could beauty, my lord, have no better commerce than an honest Aye, truly. For the power of beauty will sooner transform honesty from what it is to a bod than the force of honesty can translate beauty into its likeness. This is sometime a paradox, and other times give it proof. I did love you once. Indeed, my lord. You made me believe so. You should not have believed me. For virtue cannot so inoculate our stock, but we should relish of it. 
and loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to another. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I myself am indifferent, honest. Yet I could accuse me of such things that were better my mother had not borne me. I am I'm very proud, revengeful, ambitious of more offenses at my back than I have thoughts to put them in, imagination to give them shape or time to act them in. What such such fellows as I do crawling between heaven and earth? We are errant knaves all, believe none of us. Go thy ways to another. Where's your father? Uh, at home, my lord. Let the doors be shut upon him that he may play the fool nowhere but his own house. Farewell. If thou dost marry, I give thee this plague as thou dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow, thou shalt not escape calumny. To a memory, go. If thou wilt needs marry, marry a fool, for wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. To a memory, go and quickly. Farewell. I've heard of your paintings too. Well enough. God gives you one face and you make yourself another. You you jig, you amble, and you lift. You nickname God's creatures and make your wants in this your ignorance. Go to! Oh no more! Death made me mad. I say we shall have no more marriages. Those that are married already, all but one shall live. The rest shall keep as they are. What a noble mind, his hero or throne. The courtiers, soldiers, scholars, eye, tongue, sword. The expectancy and rose of the fair state. The glass of fashion and the mold of form. The observed of all observers, quite. most deject and wretched that sucks the honey of his music bounce. Now see that noble and most sovereign reason like sweet bells jangled out of tune and harsh that unmatched form and feature of blown youth blasted with ecstasy. <laughs> Whoa! Seen what I have seen. See what I see. Love, his affections do not that way tend, nor what he spake, though it lacked form a little, was not like madness. There's something in his soul o'er which his melancholy sits on brood, and I do doubt the hatch and this close will be some danger, which, to prevent, I have in quick determination thus set it down. He shall speed to England for the demand of our neglected tribute. Happily, the seas and countries differing with variable objects shall expel the something settled matter in his heart, whereon his brain still beating puts him thus from fashion of himself. What, what think you on? It shall do well. But, yeah, I do believe the origin and commencement of his grief sprung from neglected love. How no, Amelia, you need not tell us what Hamlet said. We've heard it all. <laughs> My lord, do as you please. But if you hold it fit, after the play, let his queen, mother, entreat him to show of his grief. If I'll be in the ear of all their conference. If she find him not, to England send him, or confine him to where your wisdom best shall think. It shall be so. Madness and great ones must not unwatched go.